All right, so brief intro. Uh, I've been working in film and video for several decades, uh, showing my work in various places, museums and festivals and such. And for the last maybe eight years, I've been working in 3D. Um, I thought that I would show you brief excerpts from some of the work which preceded the 3D, so you can see where I'm coming from. So we're going to look at um, brief excerpts. I can get my mouse to work here. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I've always been interested in is uh, higher dimensions. Uh, a lot of science fiction deals with high, hyperspace and such, and it's been something that's been of some interest to me. So for several years, I played with something called diachronic motion. Instead of looking at something from several different perspectives in space, you look at an action from several different perspectives in time. So you are seeing two seconds of time all at once. It's proceeding from the lower right to the upper left. And I did a lot of work along these lines. So you're going down these stairs, and this is shot in 16 millimeter film. Um, and it was actually fairly difficult to do this before there was a lot of recent equipment. So again, you're seeing two seconds of time all at once, lower right to upper left. And I played around with this for a couple of years. Uh, this is from a film called Analogies. And there's an analogy between the direction of motion in the original footage and then what happens to it in this multi-screen array. Uh, then I'm going to give you just a quick glance at this is a, another part of the same film. I'm just rotating the camera and then delaying them by as much time as it takes for something to move from one end to one side of the screen to the other. You're actually seeing 270 degrees all at once. Now, let me just pause this a second. Somebody mentioned a couple sessions ago that they were interested in solar eclipses. So I thought I would just show this to you rather briefly. Back in 1974, I took a boat along with about 200 other people across the Atlantic. We anchored off the coast of Africa and were positioned to see a pretty decent view of the solar eclipse at the time. I've seen three, and this was the one I managed to film. They are incredible experiences. They are spectacular and also, I would say, quite frightening. So I managed to position myself so you could see the sun and the people watching the sun. And the sound that you're going to hear is the sound that totally rational people make when they see an eclipse. Now, ultimately, it becomes completely chaotic, and then it coheres, and there's a kind of a mysterious symbol that arises from all this. You can see all of the stuff I'm showing you in their entireties uh, on Vimeo, and I'll give you links to that a little bit later. So the, the film I just showed you was incredibly difficult to do. Uh, many years afterwards, digital media came in, and you could do this kind of thing much more easily. So this was the first digital piece I did. I think of this as a speech from the fifth dimension. I can imagine remembering the past as if it were the source of a series of actions emanating from some region wide beside the edge of sense and moving as if by refraction into the present and beyond. 
Now, there's a little bit of a story about this piece. I was driving across the country with my wife and we were camping out. We were in the desert and I had rigged the tarp to give us a little bit of shade. And there was a tree not that far away that had its shadows cast on this tarp. And every so often the wind would blow and the tarp would lift and you'd see the tree. So I thought it was kind of interesting, two and three dimensions, appearance and reality. A couple of years afterwards, I was given a chance to do an installation piece in a museum here in Philly. So I projected the video that I shot onto a hanging silk screen. So you're seeing the tarp. And then in the gallery, there was a small fan that was triggered to glare at certain moments so that the screen itself would lift in conjunction with the top. And I thought of this as a kind of hyperdimensional tree. And there were all kinds of games. Sometimes the screen would go up when the top was going down. Sometimes they'd both do the same thing. Uh, it was a very cool piece. I was very pleased with the fact that kids seemed to like it. And this was up for a couple of months. So I think it's not totally unforeseeable that I would get involved in 3D. Uh, I was taught how to do it by the daughter of a very well-known filmmaker in New York, I named Ken Jacobs, who has done quite a lot of work with, um, what's it called? There's a name for it. Uh, my notes. A wiggle, w wiggle stereoscopy, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. Um, I worked with a couple of different setups. I worked with a, um, a, a, a Fuji W3, which I think you're familiar with. And it's very cool for things which are fairly close. I don't particularly like it for things which are further than about 10 or 15 feet. Um, so uh, can, you get, can you switch me, uh, Pascal, to studio view? Yeah, so I use this rig. It's two HD cameras mounted about seven inches apart. And uh, getting them to synchronize is no problem. Uh, getting them aligned is a little tricky, but I, I've carried this into all kinds of interesting locations. And I'm gonna show you some of what I've done. Now, I, I can't see, uh, I can't do free viewing. My eyes tend to cross. And I like, I have a, a tacit side-by-side -side monitor in my studio, which I like quite a lot, but I bit the bullet for this presentation, did it in anaglyphic, which I've never really done much before. And it's not that bad. So you want to put on your anaglyphic glasses here. And I will switch back to, so you put on your glasses and I'll show you excerpts from a piece called Dimensional Excursions. This was an hour long suite of little experiments with 3D. And this was shot with my two camera rig, uh, very tentatively balanced on the handlebars of a bike going down a hill. Um, Peter? Yeah? I will sh uh, stop your screen sharing for a moment. And okay. if you share it again, make sure to, to uh, tick um, the box with the share sound because gotcha, it, gotcha. it yep. sounded like, like it, it was uh, through your microphone. Okay, got it. Now, got it? Yes, but this time it's your full screen shared. So once, once again, don't worry, we will crop that off from the uh, video. That working? Yes, great. Okay. So this is just uh, shadows cast on a uh, curtain. And I thought it was kind of interesting to saw the lead and then the shadow. It's not unrelated to the installation piece that I, I just showed you. And this is just shot with the uh, W3. Now this was shot in the skateboard park outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Now, I was interested not just in a sort of realistic description. I wanted to involve these images. We got these sort of impossible spaces. And I had really no idea what the hell I was doing when I shot these. I shot about 30 different shots. And then I just tried every possible combination. These are the ones that I thought were coming 
But later on, I brought my Google cardboard glasses and I showed some of these guys what it looked like. And actually, they, they were pretty reflective. This is a document of this incredible installation piece that was, it was housed in a large industrial space in Philly a couple of years ago. Um, first, I, I'm, I'm showing it to you fairly descriptively. We're just seeing the pin out the camera. And this again was my two camera rig. It was done by a woman named Anne Hamilton. There's huge slots of cloth that were rotated and they could stand inside of it. It was a very cool, very cool installation. And then I started playing with it. All right, this next one was shot with the Fuji on a bicycle. And it's uh, two images. And uh, what I found interesting was the, uh, the kind of contradiction between the two planes of movement where Now this was shot on a bus going from New York to Philly. If you pay a couple extra bucks, you can actually get in the front seat. So I set up my tripod in the front of the bus. And it takes about, I guess this is going underneath the Hudson River. And then it's superimposed over a shot going over the Delaware River going to Philadelphia. And both trips take about the same time. And you'll see the tower of the bridge approaching right here. And this is also shot from a bus at night. A little bit more processing involved. And again, this is a YouTube camera rig. And then you end up going through the Holland Tunnel again. And there is a double image and it starts to resemble the climax of 2001 of those. So.
the next is a slightly longer piece. It's a document of a race in Philadelphia last November, shot with two cameras. I got a fairly well-off friend who took me, the two of us, to Machu Picchu a couple of years ago. I brought my two camera rig, climbed up to the top, and first shot for some studies of the landscape. It's quite, quite an incredible place. But what's, what you're not prepared for is the spectacle of the tourists in this place. It's completely packed as you'll see in a minute. Clearly, it's the difference between the original wall and the um, Are we going up again? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so actually here we can see in the below part, mm -hmm. okay, very perfectly fitted, which is like original wall, and then on the top we have, okay, uh, Okay, four knobs. Okay? Can you see the knob? Look at the ones that are in there. And finally, I'm going to show you some work in progress. It's called a piece called Transcontinent. And the strategies, this is all shot with an iPhone. 
strategy is very simple. If you're moving at 30 miles an hour, that's 44 feet a second. You got 30 frames per second. So every frame is separated by a foot and a half from the frame before or after it. So if you just send one frame one to your left eye and frame two to your right eye, you've got a pretty interesting the optical perspective. This is shot from a subway in New York. And then you end up going across the Midwest. This is shot from a train. And then I'm, I'm double, double, some of these are double images. Crossing the Mississippi. And then I started playing some more complicated games. And the music was, was recorded in the subway car. There was actually a group playing while I was shooting this. You can see New York in the distance. You can see the subway reflected in the window. Now this is what I've shown you, analogies, the witness the eclipse, the speech. These are all visible if you go to Vimeo and you do a search for ESORP, my name backwards. If you also do a search for ESORP comma 3D, you can see all the 3D work. This is my website and that's my email address. If there's something you wanna see in a different format, just get in touch with me and I'll put it up and let you know where it is. Okay, I'm all yours, Pascal.